What is up, guys? It's your boy, Obble, dude. Today, we're going to be doing about a 50 ped mining run. We got 62 ped right now on us uh, in probes. So we'll see how much we get through today. But I wanted to talk today about um, just investing in Entropia Universe in general and just talk a little bit about kind of my investments and kind of my long-term plan, maybe. I don't really have any, like, short-term plans. It's mainly kind of just long term or at least when it comes to mostly investing but let's just get started with uh talking about all that so the i want to start off by talking about the shares because i think the shares for the long term is going to be one of the better or best things to think about uh when playing entropia for the long term main reason for that is just because you can collect interest for a really long time and you never know if they appreciate and go up in value, then you can make even more that way. And just sitting on something like that, that can potentially go up in value or at the very least earn you interest over and over as long as it's consistent and it's good. Um, that's a huge benefit. I feel like, um, and my kind of plan with that is I have a decent amount of crystal palace shares right now. But my goal is to get to 500 shares. I have almost 350 right now. But I'm trying to get to 500 at least with Crystal Palace. And I'm working on currently getting more Calypso as well. And the main reason why I'm focusing on those two mainly is simply because... I, mainly Crystal Palace because I started with Crystal Palace. Those were the first shares that I bought when the share system started. Obviously because that's all there was. And I've kind of just been building them, building them up for a while, and they still pay pretty consistently, and they still pay pretty good, especially since the price they're at right now. I'm actually thinking about maybe picking up some more while these prices are still really good, because right now the Crystal Palace shares are like 10 or 11 ped, which I think my average... Uh, that I spent on them, I think my average is like 15 or 16 per share. So I'm down a little bit, but I've collected a decent amount of interest from holding those for the past, like I think two or three years now. So, and with that interest that I've been getting too, I haven't really been putting it into like more mining or hunting or anything to really do in game. I've kind of been, um, trying to compound what I make and put it back into the shares. So pretty much for a while until the Calypso shares came out, I was literally just every, all the interest that I was making from Crystal Palace, I was just putting it back into more Crystal Palace shares just cause I was curious about compounding in this game and seeing how well that could or maybe not work. Um, but I was just curious. So that's kind of why I'm going for compounding. Um, and right now I'm kind of more so compounding towards Calypso a little bit more, but I'm still trying to work that one out because I want to get to at least 500 Crystal Palace first and then I can kind of maybe go harder on Calypso. Uh, but I definitely need to double up what I have because I only have like 18 shares of Calypso, so nothing crazy. But building up the shares and getting like maybe a couple really decent shares that could last for a while. Cause you know, my thinking with crystal palace, for example, it's been around forever. It's proven. It still is really good and popular to this day. Um, even though there's really no events or anything crazy happening there. I mean, the payouts are still consistent and they're still pretty good. And they're, and even in for even the prices that they're at, it's still not that bad. I think they were a little bit better. Um, maybe back in the day, but I still think they're pretty, pretty decent. Um, and then adding Calypso to that because, you know, with Calypso, my main thinking is, well, you know, Calypso has a decent amount of events every single year and those events are pretty popular and a lot of people do them. And I was thinking, you know, having those shares could give me a nice little boost of interest to then just get more shares. And, Calypso, at least as far as the deeds go, they've always been a pretty hefty price. And the shares, it's pretty nice because they're a lot cheaper in comparison to that. Um, and I think that maybe there could be some more potential for those shares to run up higher um, in the long term 
if the standard is more so the shares than the deeds. Um, but they'll probably still have their own different pr price points and markets and things like that anyway. But when it comes to just owning shares in general and owning decent ones, those are kind of my main two that I kind of am just focusing on. Um, New Treasure Island, I don't think those shares are bad. I have some of them. I have more New Treasure Island than Calypso right now. And New Treasure Island pays... A little bit less than Calypso, obviously, but I would say probably pretty close to Crystal Palace even, I would say. I mean, it seems like I'm getting pretty consistent payouts from it, um, so it doesn't seem too bad either. But right now, since Crystal Palace is so cheap and I like Crystal Palace a little bit better, um, to me, it just makes more sense just to buy more Crystal Palace if I wanted to get more new Treasure Island. Um but yeah, my goal is pretty much over the long term is just hold on to those shares, see if they can appreciate maybe. And through all the interest that I'm getting, just add more shares to it. That way you can just earn more interest. And then who knows, maybe in the long term, you can earn enough interest pretty consistently to do other stuff with it. And that's kind of the main goal because I don't want to put too, too much of out of pocket into it either. But I'm just curious to see how compounding in this game can function um so when it comes to my entropia investments investing in shares um that's kind of like one of my biggest things that i'm kind of trying to focus on from here and going into the long term but there are other ways that i've invested in this game too because this game is pretty much you know with this game being a real cash economy this game is pretty much in an, everything is pretty much an investment right because you're pretty much spending money to do anything almost um, and you know, you have kind of like the time investments too, if that's kind of the way you want to go about it as well. Um, instead of investing more time, uh, more money, you can invest more time. But another investment that I've kind of heavily gone into, and this is probably my biggest money drain investment, and that is mining. So, you know, pretty early on, I tried hunting and I tried mining and I kind of realized early on that I wanted to do more mining than hunting just because I really like mining and I think that there's a decent amount of potential to it. And because not as many people mine versus like compared to hunting, um, I feel like it makes it a little bit easier to possibly to maybe get something decent out of it, but not always. But mining in general has probably been one of my bigger investments just because I want to skill up. I want to be able to use bigger and better stuff, um, even more so than what I'm using now. And, you know, be able to go to other planets and mine effectively and get some pretty decent stuff. We're getting a lot of misses now. But that's like the, been the main investment because... I would say out of all the main career paths, I guess you could say, in Entropia, mining is kind of the main thing that I'm going for. Um, I do like hunting and I do do it on occasion or, you know, for like videos or, you know, if I've been doing a lot of mining and I want to switch it up, I'll do some hunting. But that's not really one of my main priorities. I kind of just do it as like a second, as like a secondary thing where I'm trying not to spend too, too much on it. Um... Unless it's like for a video or something, but when it comes to mining, I have basically just slowly kind of chipped stuff in as far as like, you know, a little bit of ped here, a little bit of ped there, stacking up resources, selling them when I got a good stack and just kind of slowly trying to build up an inventory and a ped card a little bit and translating some of those profits into shares as well um but mining is kind of one of those things where it's like you know if you can hit something decent or maybe you know you know just build it up you know building it up doesn't necessarily mean that you're like really even making money or progressing it just means that over time you've mined effectively enough where you can kind of slowly build if you keep kind of chipping into your ped card a little bit or if you maybe get a decent hit or you keep getting profitable runs and you can get like a little bit off the um the markup and stuff you know over the long period of time you know it can it can build up a little bit 
Um, but my main focus is just being able to do some crazier stuff like get better miners and go and mine on like FOMA or, you know, the Arcadia Underground, which honestly, I could probably do the Arcadia Underground with what I have right now, honestly, and it'd probably be fine. Um, probably not the most effective, but still, still slowly trying to kind of build up to that point a little bit. Um, and probably one of my smaller investments when it came to mining was my skills. So I think I was like level four, or level five miner. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to spend like a hundred ped on mining skills and I'll just see where that gets me. And I was kind of surprised because at least back then when I did it, mining skills were pretty cheap and I got all of my necessary skills that I needed to get like a little bit past level 10 with like a hundred ped from where I was. So I gained a pretty decent amount of levels for not a huge investment. And it definitely progressed me a lot faster to be able to do kind of more of the fun stuff, like, you know, getting the F one Oh five and mining like some better areas and getting more loot and kind of leveling up quicker and things like that. Um, and now we're kind of at this point. So Mining has definitely been one of my biggest investments just because I think in the long term, as far as like gameplay goes, um, I think it's definitely going to be beneficial. Um, and as I'm slowly progressing with mining, I'm also trying to keep my hunting a little caught up as well. That way I can kind of kill some stuff if I ever want to as well. But my hunting is kind of way below my mining. And plus, I just don't want to spend the, all that money on all these different weapons and different like tiers of things that you need it's just like hunting gets super expensive like mining kind of can be expensive but i think compared to hunting i think hunting is a lot more expensive because i feel like things change a lot more with hunting um and i feel like when it comes to like the time spent i feel like i've spent like a lot of time hunting and got pretty far but I don't know. It, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, just running through an LR 15 in 20 minutes and spending almost 40 pet on it every single time, like almost 100 pet an hour, not including the ammo just for the weapons. I mean, and there's ways around it, but then you got to spend more and then it just, it gets expensive. Like hunting is pretty expensive. Um, but yeah, so one of my biggest investments, I would say, is just mining because, you know, if we can get to pretty high level mining, that's definitely going to be beneficial as an investment, I feel like, in the long term. And now, I mean, I pretty much just spend pet on probes and I just, you know, gain experience through probes. I could take skill pills. I got plenty of skill pills. I just don't really use them much. I should. I should start using them more. But I feel like once leveling up gets a little bit harder, I'm, I might want them a little bit more then. Um, so I've been kind of just stacking them up a little bit. Yeah, when it comes to mining, I mean, we've definitely built up a decent kind of inventory of uh, resources and ped and, you know, things like that. So it's just like over the long term, just playing and trying to get back as much as you can and sell it at a good price and try to make some money off of how much you spent. That's pretty much the whole, the whole idea, right? So as a long-term kind of grind, I don't think mining is really a bad choice to be honest. Um, and that's kind of been one of my main focuses and one of my main investments when it comes to Entropia. And like I said too, you know, if I, if I end up like making a little extra ped, like 10 or 20 ped and depending on what shares I want to buy, like, for example, if I made like 20 ped um, as far as markup or something and I might just be like, OK, I'll buy an extra share of Crystal Palace at 15 ped or now it's like 11. But back then when I was doing that and buying them more, it was like 15. So I was like, OK, I made 20 ped. Let's buy, you know, one share of Crystal Palace and that'll kind of secure our profit a little more. And we might be able to make a little more profit off of that profit. And that's kind of like my second main focus is just like trying to compound and add a little bit of ped here and there to the shares when I can to slowly kind of just build it up and accumulate. Right. Cause it's like, it kind of goes both ways. Like the longer you play Entropia, 
the more money you could also lose. But at the same time, the longer you hold on to shares, you know, it can be the opposite effect too. So mining has definitely been a big one for me. Now, another investment, which is a little more recent, and I wouldn't really call, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, pretty much anything in this game can be considered an investment if you're making money. Um, but another thing is just selling on the marketplace or trading um, and doing it kind of specifically. Now, there's many ways that you can trade or, you know, take something and, you know, maybe give it more value and then sell it or sell it to another player, one one v one or something. But more recently, what I did was for a video a few months back, I bought the TerraMaster 4. And the one that I bought was pretty nice. I spent 200 pet on it roughly i think it was like 187 roughly around there um like 190 ish pretty much like 200 pet though um and i bought that for the video for the terra master video when i was comparing the f106 and i bought it because i was like wow this is a really nice finder because i forget what the total tier rate was of the terra master 4 they're all the same but if you look up the Terra Master 4, you can see what the total like tier value is, I guess. In this finder that I picked up for like 190-ish ped, I picked it up and the tier rate was like 2,000. Okay. Insane tier rate. Hard to find those things. Um, honestly, I should have sold it probably for a little more. What I should have done, which again, this whole game is pretty much about learning and you know, kind of taking real life economics into it um, and just trying to figure things out. Uh, but what I should have done was probably gone a little bit higher. And then if it didn't sell, just drop it down incrementally until it sold. But I was pretty comfortable with the price, but I kind of wish I did do a little bit more. But I got the Terra Master 4, did the video, made the video. And I was like, you know, what? I might hold on to it because the tier rate is really nice and it might come in handy. Um and then I was thinking about it and I'm like, you know what? I kind of maybe want to try to get that money back. So I looked on the market and I'm like, wow, there is like every Terra Master 4 on the market right now has a tier rate of like 10, like just horrible. And I'm like, okay, well, this tier rate's insane. It's really hard to find. I mean, I should be able to like in my head initially, I was like, I should be able to sell this thing for close to 300 ped to be honest, just because how hard this thing is defined. Like I'm not going to find another one of these anytime soon unless I'm actually like actively looking. Um, but that's kind of part of it too. Like if you want to do something like trading, then you have to kind of stay on top of things and know what you want to find. And when it comes on the market, pick it up if you can get it at a steal. Um, but I was like, all right, I'm going to put this on the market because this is the best finder that's going to be on the auction house right now. And I think the majority of the market was selling theirs at about 150, 160 ped for low tier rates. You know, few of them were used, so it was a little bit lower than that even just because they were used up quite a bit um, and people were just trying to sell them off. But this one was pretty much full. I think like three ped, uh, a decay was on it. And I sold it, I put it on auction for 212. I spent 190 on it. So I got my money back plus a little extra, nothing crazy. But, you know, I'm sure the buyer was happy to find something like that and not to spend like a ridiculous amount of money on it. And I was happy to get my money back plus a little extra. And, you know, like I said before, something like that, I could take that extra 20, 30 ped that I made and, you know, maybe pull eight ped out of pocket and buy one Calypso share. Or maybe buy two Crystal Palace shares with that. I still haven't decided. But, you know, something like that is basically what I do uh, when it comes to investing. Because it usually almost always tries to boil down to the shares. Um, but there's other things I do as well. So, when it comes to trading, what you can do is find different, you know, devices like that. Whether they're miners with good tier rates or guns with good tier rates. Uh, whatever it is, whatever you can find on the market, and if you can buy it at a decent price, and if you know how hard they are to find, um, you know, you can increase it by like 20, 30 ped, maybe even 50 ped. Honestly, I'm 
I'm pretty confident that the right buyer that knows how hard those finders can be to find. And recently, like, I haven't seen another finder like that pop up um, since I found the one that I bought. So, I mean, they, they pop up, but they don't pop up, like, as often as, like, you know, your typical 10-point tier um, Terra Master. You know what I mean? Like, they're not as common. So, I'm pretty confident the right buyer that knows what it is. Like, I think 250 is a pretty okay price. Um, I think 212 which is what I sold it for, is way more than fair. Um, so, like, doing things like that, like, things that are harder to find, if you can find them at a good price... And you know that, you know, because they're kind of hard to find, you might be able to squeeze out a little extra. That is another possible um, way to invest. And that's something that I do. Um, And that's what I've done recently. Mainly my main point was to get my money back, but I did want to see if I could try to get a little extra and it sold pretty quick. So I was pretty happy to make that extra 20-ish ped or whatever. Um, Yeah, like about 20 ped. So, you know, I was happy. I'm sure the guy that bought it, super happy to have it. Um, I was also thinking about tearing it up a little bit myself. Um, but I was like, you know what? Not going to, not going to take the time. But if I wanted to make a little bit more, like maybe an extra 30%, I think if I remember correctly, if I want to make an extra like 30 plus percent, I could have tiered it up one or two. Um, And if I had done it all the right way and done all the right stuff, then I could have easily done that. Um, And another way that I invest as well is something similar to what I just talked about with like trading, but it's more like crafting in a way, but it's not really crafting, right? So there's kind of like two ways of crafting in this game. You have the craft terminal and the blueprints and all that. I haven't really touched that in a while. But something that I will do because I do mine and I do mine for both ores and end matter, I will accumulate a good amount of force nexus. So a lot of times what I'll do is like over three, four months or so, maybe two months, depending on how much I play, um, you know, as I'm accumulating like force nexus, I'll spend, you know, an hour or two going for sweat. And slowly building up a stack of sweat. And then sometimes while I'm sweating, if there's someone trading sweat at a decent price, I'll buy a little bit to increase my stack a little higher and faster. Because, I mean, if I'm buying it close to a ped um, for each K, it's not too bad. Um, And, you know, getting it yourself is even better because, you know, you're spending the money to kind of mine out the force nexus. Um, but the nice thing about the sweat is that you could get it completely for free, uh, without spending anything on it. If that's what you wanted to do, I kind of do a little bit of both, um, just when the price is right. And when there's good deals going on, things like that. Um, and then I'll build up that sweat. And then once I have kind of an equal amount of sweat and force nexus, what I'll do is I'll turn that into mine essence with the refiner. I believe it's called Mind Essence. It's been a little bit. I haven't done it in quite a few months, so it's been a little bit. Um, I think it's Mind Essence, though. But you craft that up with the refiner. And, I mean, for years, it's been a solid 20% markup. Solid. I mean, I've never had an issue selling it for 20% markup. Whether it's 50 ped stacks or 100 ped stacks, I've never had an issue selling it for that much. Um so what I'll do is instead of just selling the force nexus at like what I think nowadays it's actually like two or 3% before it was closer to 5% at its height. I think it was like 10% um, markup to buy force nexus on auction. Now I think it's way lower than that, which can also be beneficial too, but you know, you mine out some force nexus instead of selling it at like three, 2%, whatever it is. Now you refine that into mine essence and sell that at 20%. And now your little bit of investment getting those uh force nexus drops now your markup's gone from two three four five percent whatever it is now up to twenty percent and you're not spending anything extra because you can get sweat for free it's just a time investment at that point um so that can be a slight side investment that could also be beneficial and something that i personally do from time to time 
just because I think it's fun. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy providing that uh, uh, item to the market. And I have fun doing it. Uh, I get the Force Nexus anyway because my main gameplay is mining. So it's not like I'm going out of my way to do it. Um, it's just kind of part of my natural flow of how I play anyway. So for me, it's kind of worth it. And I'd rather take a little extra time to earn an extra 20% than possibly even 2%. Because I've seen Force as low as 2%. So, And it might still be 2%. But that's an extra kind of thing that I do as well uh, in combination with everything else. Now there's some other things I've been thinking about doing, but I'm not really sure if I'm going to do them yet or not. I know there's so many other things you can do in this game and other ways you can like invest and play to make more. Um, I'm curious to know though, what do you guys do in Entropia universe just in general? Or, as long, or at least when it comes to like investing or spending money um, to either play the game or try to make a little bit to keep playing the game, whichever. Um, but what kind of things do you do to try to invest in the long term in Entropia? You know, do you not even hunt, mine, or craft? You know, are you coloring or are you doing something else that's like that most people don't do. I'm just kind of curious what everyone does um, when it comes to Entropia and how they kind of invest and think about the game. Because for me, I kind of just think about the economics of it. You know, I enjoy mining because you're going out there pulling resources that people need for crafting and you're kind of just providing that to a market. And I kind of enjoy that. Hunting, it's a little more obscure than that. It's a little more... I don't know, all over the place, if that makes sense. I'm not, I don't know. It's a, it, I don't know. The way I see it is if I want to hunt or if I want to shoot and loot, I'm going to play like Rust or something else, right? I mean, yeah, it's a real cash economy, so that's kind of the main thing, but I don't know. There's so many games with better combat, but there's not a whole lot of games where not only do you mine, but it's a real cash economy, so what you mine is actually based off of real money, that's kind of insane to me. And that's a little different to me. And that's why I, I kind of have gone towards more of the mining route than anything else. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything that I do, though, um, in Entropia Universe to kind of invest for the future, the long term, trying to kind of break even as best I can. Because my whole goal isn't even really necessarily to make money in the game. It's mainly just not to lose or to break even. It's mainly just to not lose, to break even, and allow myself to keep playing the game and keep cycling ped over and over without having to really deposit money anymore at a certain point. Um, you know, get to the point where I have enough in-game assets to where... I don't ever have to think about depositing in this game. I can just, as long as I, I'm smart and I do the right thing and don't spend more than I can afford, then, you know, my main goal is just to not need to deposit anymore. And I haven't deposited in quite a little bit because um, I've kind of just been cycling a good amount of PED. Um, and, and it definitely helps and I'm still rather low level. Um, so things are still rather cheap. I mean, a 50 ped mining run lasts me like 30 minutes and we got eight drops left and we started with 62. So I, I have a pretty good feeling about this run though. I think this was a pretty good run. Um, nothing crazy. I don't think we found anything that I was really going for as far as mining. Yeah, nothing really got some derulium, which isn't too bad. So I'm thinking I want to run through the rest of these probes since I got like eight more drops and then we can kind of see what we're left with and then we can call it a video. But yeah, let me know down below in the comments. Um, what do you do to invest in this game or what's your gameplay style like or what's your long term goals or anything like that? Uh, I definitely want to hear them down below. I'm not going to lie. One thing I was kind of thinking about, but I just don't know if I want to make the investment, but. I felt like I feel like I feel like being a pirate in space could could have some fun potential in this game. Um, but I've never done it, never really looked into it, but I thought it would always be interesting because 
you know, I feel like that kind of gives you a little more Eve online vibe. And I've been playing a little Eve lately, um, just here and there for fun, trying to learn it. But I feel like I feel like that would be kind of fun. But I don't know. As it is, I've been playing other games and, you know, I haven't been doing too much Entropia anyway. So I don't know how much more stuff I should be adding to my gameplay right now. Especially since I don't know how profitable that could be. But I have a feeling we might not find anything else on these last drops. So what I'm thinking is if we don't get anything on this last drop, probably just call it. That way we can save five drops for another run. And um, that way we don't waste too much at once unnecessarily. Because like I said, trying to trying to conserve a little bit, you know, trying to stay in the game as long as I can. And if we can get lucky and get a decent hit one of these days and, you know, okay, not bad. Double drop. I like it. Okay. I think I know what I'm going to do here. Run more this way. I was actually surprised with that double drop. I think I went a little too far, but the radius is somewhat large. Yeah, no, nothing. I think we're going to call it on these last two right here because that was a pretty good way to end it. And the double drop failed us, so I think that just tells us that uh, we probably don't have too much more left to find. But that's another reason why I always put it on both ores and end matter because not I'm not just going for ores either. Like I'm going for both ores and end matter. Like I mentioned with like the mind essence, you need end matter for that. I pretty much mine for both ores and end matter every time because one, I want to level up and skill up for both. And two, I mean the stuff that I'm going for when I'm mining, I'm going for both ores and end matter anyway. So that's why I double it up every time I mine. I could do it individually, I guess, but I mean, it, at that point, it just, I feel like I'm going to waste more money doing it that way when I can use one probe and get both just like I did. So, uh, let's see, we got seven ped left in probes. So we spent about 55 ped on this run. So we spent 55 ped this run and I feel like we didn't do very well. 43. Okay, yeah. So we took a hefty like 12 ped loss on that one. And with markup, we're definitely not going to catch up. So we're probably at least still going to be down 10 ped from this run. So not the best run, but it happens. It's part of it, you know. Some days you get like insane runs, some days not so much. I've been doing a lot of mining here um kind of consistently. I need to start hitting up some of these other areas. I need to go back to Ashy too. I haven't mined in Ashy in a little bit, so gotta gotta find some other places to start mining. But I mean, I do like this area. But I mean, once you mine an area for so long, you're like, okay, it's not like that crazy anymore. So then you kind of look elsewhere. Um, that's probably one thing I'm gonna be doing is doing a little more exploring and see if I can find some decent spots to mine. And also, in the comments below, um, if you guys know of any good areas that you think I should mine and mine in a video, uh, let me know. Because uh, I'm definitely always looking for new places to try to mine. Um, try to keep it on Calypso for right now, just because I'm trying to just stay on Calypso for a little bit longer. Um, I don't know. I mean, if I ever leave Calypso, it's just going to be to visit. I think I'm always going to stay on Calypso just because there's really no reason to really go anywhere else fully, um, in my opinion, at least. But, you know, I want to start visiting planets at some point soon, but I want to kind of level up a little bit more, have a little more stuff that way. I can do that a little more easier and you know, we can kind of go from there. But anyway, guys, that's the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.